Guys, not to make myself a social pariah in the knife community, but I think I'm about over the whole super steel thing. So let's turn this around and take a look at it from above and I'll kind of tell you why. Yeah, guys, you heard that intro correctly. I am just about done with super steels. I'm kind of over it and I'll explain why. I've picked out six knives. Three of them are in what would be considered super steels and three of them are in more standard steels. Now I did set myself up for success here to give a good comparison because these are three super steels I really like and these are three more standard or budget steels that I like. So let's go ahead and we're going to look at the super steels first and I'll explain why I like these ones and some of the issues I have with some of the others. So starting left to right, we have a knife in CPM S90V, one of my favorite all around steels, even as a not, not considering as a super steel, uh, ZDP 189, another great steel that I really, really love. And this one is in M390. And now these steels are great, great steels that get me what I want, that I love out of the, the next batch of steels we're going to talk about, but with some added benefits. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So S90V is a steel I love, and all of these have the same benefits. So the thing about this is these steels will take a very aggressive, very toothy edge, even at a higher polish. Um, ZDP 189 starts to kind of lose its bite when you start to polish, but S90V, um, even at a higher grit, will hold that aggressiveness and tooth based on, because it's got some very aggressive carbides in it. ZDP 189, this one is in, uh, this is done by Katsu, it's ZDP 189, and it's at like 67 Rockwell. Nice thing about this is it's got a toothy, toothy, aggressive edge, and it's going to hold it for a very long time, as will S90V. And then you've got M390, which is another super steel that takes a very crisp, very aggressive edge, has a good bit of carbides in there. It's got some vanadium and things like that. Now, there's some other super steels out there that you can get that that are just crazy over the top that have tungsten carbides and stuff in them like rex 121 and maxima which i've earned I've, I've started to respect those a little bit more but they have some downsides which we're going to talk about on the other side these steels provide you with the same things that i love in the more budget steels but with some added benefits these are very very resilient you don't have to sharpen these anywhere near as often as you do say these standard steels they're done harder they've got a, a, a better structure to them they're more consistent because some of them are powdered the the m390 is a powdered metallurgy zdp 189 can be taken all the way up to 67 rockwell it doesn't get brittle it holds that edge a very very long time it's a very aggressive edge on it and an m390 super consistent powdered metallurgy and things like that that gets you uh, it gets you pretty far up into things when you start looking at good powdered metallurgy and you've still got a good bunch of like larger carbides that are aggressive. The carbides are what are doing the cutting. And the problem I have with a lot of the super steels, um, not to call out, you know, it, it's not that it's a bad steel. I don't like the magna cut as much. It's a very, very fine grain structure. Yes, it's really consistent. I know that that prevents some of the inclusions and problems that you have in standard steels, but it also leads to the blades being slick. Uh, a lot of these like CPM 154 and things like that, the newer steels, the grain structure is fine, which if that's what you like, that's fine. I like to be able to take my knives up in the grit to where I'm doing a polished cleaner edge and still have aggressiveness. And sometimes you lose that in some of the super steels. Now, these are all three super steels that I really don't see that as much in, but you definitely can get into some of those steels that have got a super, super fine grain structure and they just don't have that aggressive edge that you want. Now, I've also picked out three of the more standard budget steels that have some of the same attributes as this, but are way cheaper. And I, I think I like some of the things about them better. So let's look at them and they are 14C28N which is one of the original steels that sand, this is a, a knife, this is a steel that was built for the knife industry. 154 CM, which is basically the modern version of ATS 34. This is the steel that Bob Terzola still uses to make all of his custom knives and VG 10. 
if I can get it to focus, VG10 that Spyderco uses in a lot of their knives still. These are steels that have been around for a long time, and they still stand up to the test of time. The reason I say that is they are still pretty consistent. This is not something that you're really going to have to worry about in your 14C28N that you're going to have to worry about it being inconsistent and having a lot of inclusions and things like that. You may have some issues with it, but not too bad. But then it has a very, the, the carbides that are in this are very irregularly shaped. They're very angular, they're very sharp, which means that you can take this up to a higher grit and still have carbides that are aggressive and just give it a really fine, really good looking edge, which I have a tendency to like, and I don't want to have to give up on that. I don't want to have to have steels like some of these super steels where I have to keep it down at an ugly 600 grit edge. I like a fine refined edge, but not to give up any of the, the cutting, the aggressiveness that I get. 154 CM, 154 CM takes a very, very crisp, very aggressive edge if you sharpen it properly. Now you can do things like this, like on the super steels, if you're using diamonds and things like that, um, like Maximet and things like that, you can get some of the same attributes. And then VG10 is just a great all around steel that Spyderco has used for years. And it doesn't, it's, it stood the test of time. The problem I have with a lot of the super steels are, yes, like Maxima and Rex 121, they absolutely will hold an edge almost forever. As long as you're sharpening them properly, typically with diamonds and things like that, and you're not being aggressive with the edge. You can chip them. They can be very, very brittle. They have a ton of tungsten in them. Some of the other steels have got different like vanadium carbides and things like that. But the problem you run into is you don't really, you're not really giving up a lot with these steels because yes, they don't hold their edges easily. However, a lot of the super steels, when it comes time to sharpen them, you are really going to have to pack a lunch if you let it get dull. I can strap this up on pretty much anything. 14C28N is very, very responsive to a strop. I can strop these up on almost anything, and I don't have to have something really spectacularly special and expensive to sharpen these. These three steels here, I can sharpen these on aluminum oxide and have no problem. Um, you're, you're, you're not cutting, it, it, you're not, like most of the steels, you still could do that. However, what you run into is it's just going to take you a very, very long time and you may want to use a diamond stone. Some of the steels like Rex 121, you have to use diamond. You can't use standard stones to do it. Rex 121 and Maximet, you have to. And the fact is that like it takes forever once it gets dull. And with these, you can feel them start to get dull. In my experience, those super, super high end, high, high the higher register super steels like Maximet, and Rex 21, Rex 121, you don't get that lead up. They just go from, hey, it's sharp to crap, it's dull. Now I got to sharpen it and you got to pack a lunch to it. They do take a while and they can be finicky. So for me, I just, I really am thinking I want to get back to where knife companies are offering their knives in steels that are more up what I want. I don't want a magna cut knife at this point. I've had enough of them in. It's not a bad steel. It just doesn't do what I want. It won't let me do what I want as a sharpener. It, it, it Yes, it sharpens easy and it does take a good edge, but it's not the edge I want. And so when companies look at this, I think that more companies should start to get back to some of these steels and offer. I mean, the price of knives have just went crazy over the last few years. And I think that stepping back into these steels that are every bit as good when it comes to function as some of the super steels, I think would do a lot for the knife community. So with that being said, for me, some of these budget steels are definitely a yup. So let's turn us around. We'll do some final thoughts and I'll send you out about your day. There you go, guys. And like I said, I still like some of the super steels. The ones I mentioned there, I still love a lot. Some of them are my favorite steels. And I think that some of the finer grain structure steels would be great for things like wood carving knives and chisels and things like that, where you want that super, super fine edge and the carbides to be smaller so that you get a cleaner finish with that. Uh, I see that being a benefit or something like a straight razor where you want something with a super, super fine structure and edge. Uh, for the things I do with a knife though, I like the more aggressive 
inconsistent carbides. The inconsistencies in them are the things that I love about them. So with that being said, you guys know what to do. Drop a like, share the videos, hit subscribe, you know, all those things. Hit the bell icon, all those things that support channels. I've got some links down below to Coffee Brand Coffee and Tempered Trail that will have, that have discounts built in. You can use, save 10%. Uh, if you use those links, I also have a coupon code that will save you 10% at Farm Forge Knife Works, 10% at uh, Katsu Knives, 10% at Rosecraft Blades, and 40% at Beyond EDC Knives. Uh, I also have tons of affiliate links down below with most of the major vendors and an Amazon store. Take those, pin, pin them to your browser, use them for all the shopping you're going to do. And if you want to, you could think about joining my membership. There is a spot for that down below where I do exclusive content, premium sharpening tutorial series. I do giveaways and there's a private discord. With that being said, guys, that's it on this one. I love you all. Keep it clean in the comment section. If it's your birthday, happy birthday. And I'll see you in the next video.